planning your trade. Should it be set in stone or should you allow for a little flexibility and add a little art into your trading once things really start to form up? Well, let's check it out. Guys, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about today about uh, about plans, uh, adjusting your plans, and you know, should you be flexible? Should it be written in stone? So we we see a lot of commentary uh, in questions and things that we see on uh, in the in the Slack room, and you know, folks are looking for hard and fast rules, man, things that they can just write down and live by, but. You, you got to realize that there's some art that goes into the whole trading aspect and identifying what means something to you, right? I can tell you where my lines are. I can give you reasoning behind why I put my lines where I put my lines. But you may find another area that means a little bit more to you or that adds a little bit more significance to a trade location or a trade idea to you. So I want to talk about two tickers today. One of them is INFI INFI, uh, which I took a couple of trades on today. Really, it's just one trade, but I added on to it. Um, and then the other is uh, CTEK, C-T-E-K. Uh, and we're going to talk about both of those today and and what happened, what the plan was, and, and what went down. So here on INFI, right, what do we see? So I do the same thing every day, right? We come in, we look at the ticker, we see after hours yesterday, it ran up, formed a high. We come in, we're looking at this thing pre-market. We see that the high is set. We can see this area up here and the high is set. So what do we do? We draw our lines, right? Because this is what I say all the time. We draw our lines. So first thing you're going to say is, well, why did I draw this line up here at 163 and not draw it up over here at 166 or 167 or whatever it is, right? This is the art part of drawing your lines, right? To me, this area at 163 has more significance. To you, maybe 165 or 166 has more significance uh, because it meets up with this prior high over here. That's fine. Your line is just as good as my line. It's just in a different place. That's okay. I also have a line down here in the 150 area. Right, because here in pre-market, we see what happened up here. We have a pre-market high. It tanked down, cracked these support levels. Obviously, it rejected here. It comes up, it rejects again here. So to me, this is an important level. That's why this level is important to me. This level is important to me up here at the 163 area because it hit multiple times. And it looks stable and sturdy. And this is a fudge factor. And it pushed through and then retraced right back through it. I didn't hold above it. Right. So to me, that's a, a significant area to pay attention to. So I came into this thing this morning uh, thinking, OK, I'm looking for a pop into this area, possibly scale again into this area. And then if all goes to hell, I take it off up here at 180, which is above the highs. Right. No big deal. Size your trades uh, appropriately and all that kind of good stuff and scale your trades as you see fit. Now. As the market was opening, right? So I'm going to draw another line in here at this support line. And it's easy easy to see pre-market. It was obvious support. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see a little more detail as to what's going on. Easy to see that it kept holding here, holding here, holding here. We finally pop below it a little bit and then come back up into it. And when the market opened, Right. So what happened? The market opened and I see this happening. We're below VWAP. It comes up here, hits VWAP, rejects hard and provides a nice little what we consider to be a death candle. Right. It wipes out the entire move up that it was making from, say, nine o'clock back up into VWAP. Right. It wipes that entire move out. Now, again, something to take into account. You hear me say this all the time, too, is look for the range on the stock. What is the range? OK, this is not a huge ranging stock. There's decent range and there's enough meat on the bone back here uh, to get into a position anywhere in this area back down into where it kind of came from, which was the 104 area. Right. So you got a good 20 cents of meat on here, 30 cents of meat. So when I saw this, this wash happen, right. I'm paying attention to that now. And now I want to see what happens as we start coming back up in here. So that's where I started scaling in 
to my trade. So I scaled into my trade here. It came down, rejected. I added on a little more, added on a little more, right? So I was I was real comfortable with the position I was adding in here. My my stop was back here behind VWAP at this point, right? No longer am I looking at this 180 level as a stop, okay? Because that plan went all to hell uh, when the stock opened up and tanked right out of the gate, okay? That's the sticking to your plan, but maybe you need to add a little art to your plan and sometimes be a little flexible and modify your plan based on what happens in the market. So I already saw this support level first thing in the morning. So if we didn't get the pop up into the lines that I was looking at and it crashes through and then comes back up, that's a line I'm interested in paying attention to, to look to get a trade on. And that's what I did. So I got the trade on. It came back up, popped into now this support level, becomes resistance, added a little more size on, and then it stalled. It just sat here, right? I had an initial profit target here. So it came down, boom, tagged me. And then it took a little while to fill that, that order I had there. And it just small size was trading into it. And I gave it a little time. I gave it an opportunity. Um, I was comfortable in the position. I was sitting in profit. I had taken some profit off of the trade here. So now I'm sitting with a small position, just waiting to see if this thing's going to continue to fade or is it going to reclaim? This thing could do whatever it wants to do, right? Just because the idea is that this thing could roll over and die and not come back on a day two or you know, technically, if you really want to look at it, it's a day one, right? Because it ran after hours yesterday. So today is really the first day of that real activity. This thing could go up and make new highs. Who knows? So I'm proactive. I'm defensive. I take control of my trades. Once a trade goes green and I'm sitting in the green and I got a position sitting down here in the green, I can either wait for it to come back to break even or I can take it off with a little extra profit. So in this case, I took it off with a little extra profit and then closed out the trade. And as you can see later on, it just died off. Well, geez, Vic, why didn't you get another trade on and trade back up into here? Because the volume was so light, there wasn't enough real movement there wasn't enough activity for me to feel comfortable in getting a trade on to possibly take it to you know what is the current low not enough meat on the bone here it could continue to fade off you don't know there's too many unknowns in here right there's not enough range and enough volume to make sense so once i get out of the trade i let it go i even commented this commented on this in the thread in the main chat when somebody asked me if i was looking to get back in on additional pops in this thing so if this thing would have came all the way back up to my lines, I might have considered taking those trades up there based on what was happening in the market at the time. But that's not what happened. And I can't talk about what might have been. So that being said, let's move on to the next trade that actually didn't happen. CTEK. C-T-E-K. So I come in here in the morning and I know I sound like a broken record. I pull up the, the data on here. And I can't get back. There we go. Get back a little further here to show some data on the screen. And what do I do? I draw my lines, right? After hours yesterday, this thing decided that it was going to go from a dollar sixty-two ish area, right, where it closed at dollar seventy, and then run. And it ran all the way up to as high as three twenty-three ish, right, that area. So we put in a high, and it comes down and, and creates this this structure. You can see the highs set, right? You can see these areas of, of highs being set. And so what do I do? I draw my lines. So there's a working from the left, right? I saw this high here. I'm not looking to trade these in between areas here. I'm looking at trading the outer areas. Uh, so I saw this up here and that was an area of interest to me, but I thought, well, if we do get up to that point, this thing may just continue through. So I was no longer interested in taking a trade there. Instead, that's my stop level. That's where I'd be getting out. Uh, if this thing were to continue up here, I wouldn't look to scale any further. So that for me was my stop level based on this trade idea. And then I also had this large support area here. So in pre-market, I'm see, I'm looking over here, right? At eight o'clock in the morning, I'm seeing what's happening. I'm like, ooh, okay. So we got to come all the way up into here to hit here, but there's a possibility that old support becomes new resistance and could hold us down. So first thing in the morning, I see what's happening. I had my orders sitting out here at these lines. 
unfortunately, because the uh, INFI trade was a work in progress, I did not leave my trades sitting out there on CTEC because I don't like watching multiple trades happen and try to manage more than what I think I can handle at any one given time. So I took my trades off because the volume was low, right, in the first 30 minutes of trading. So I just kind of let it go and said, you know, it may not pop. So let me just take my orders off and not worry about it. And sure enough, what happens? It comes through, tags my line, didn't tag my second line, but continued on in a very nice orderly fashion and traded the way that we would normally expect a low-hanging fruit setup to trade. So this just goes to show you that even though you set your plan out there and you modify your plan based on what's happening in the market, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't work. But the best thing you can do is make your plan and trade your plan and then live with it. It's yours. Own it. So with that, I hope this is helpful for you guys. I hope uh, seeing how I manage the trade on INFI and then how I uh, drew my lines and came up with why I got out of this possible trade uh, is useful to you guys. So enjoy and I will see you guys in the room.